Is this live yet? Yeah. I'm just making some coffee. And then we're going to have a bit of a stream. I'm going to have a little nip. Because it is new. Isn't it? So that means it's okay. Let's see. Yep, just boiling the kettle. How's everybody doing? Who's rolling in on here? Um, nobody yet. Okay. Goody, good, good. Come on, water. Heat up. <clears throat> A watch pot. Am I right, guys? Am I fucking right? So as you roll in, let me know what it is you're doing, what you did this weekend. Make it good. Make me jealous of you. Make me wish that I was living your life. That's all we ask for. All right. Okay, this is warm enough. Tired for me. Fucking impatient, so I drink lukewarm coffee. That is my deal. Oh. Uh, so, how are we doing today? It is Sunday, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, I will just <clears throat> let everybody roll in. I just recorded the, um, I think in the series for this book, it's part four, um, the part on Scarlet. <clears throat> so that will be, I'm editing it right now. I just ran out of time. So that will be up when this, after this live stream is done. Okay. But um, I don't know how long. See, the thing that's weird about live streams is it sometimes takes anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to send notifications out. So um, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Because there's a part of me that's just like, I could just jam through everything I want to say and then just stop and then go back and start um, doing the shit. But I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, so I'm doing that. Um, I'm hopefully going to be recording a podcast today because it's been a bit. And I don't know how much I want to get into right here because I typically don't talk about my personal life as much on the main feed as I do on the member streams. Um just because I feel like closer and more comfortable with the people in the anarchy cream and shit like that. But um, I guess I will give a small recap. Um, I went through like some really heavy um, I don't know, like manipulation kind of shit, um, with my ex quite recently. And it seems to have lingered and it took like a really long time to get through all of this shit. And, like, it's been fucking weeks that this shit has still been going on. And um, it's really hard to be the bigger person in this world. Especially when you're a poet. And, like, you could slay fuckers on the page and put it out today. 
and everyone would fucking know what the fuck's going on. But like you see them like doing their passive aggressive posts on social media, their passive aggressive reels and all this shit thinking that their shit don't stink. And, but then they talk to you like everything's cool and like, yeah, you know, like we need to really be friends and like really like just all that fucking shit. And so it's like, there's a part of me that wants to like annihilate this person online, but like, what does that ever do? You know? And it's just, it's so fucking annoying. And later today, fingers crossed, later today is the last time I have to have any interaction with this person And, um, like, I don't know, like, JH, what's up, man? That kind of stuff really tends to linger. Yeah, it tends to linger when there's, like, physical objects involved, you know? And then it tends to linger, too, if the person who you're talking about is really fucking good it making you feel like a piece of shit. Um, that tends to stick quite a bit. So, um, it's just hard. <clears throat> and like, there's all these fucking lies and shit that they tell. And at the same time, I'm like, I'm like, they need to tell whatever story they need to tell to get whatever sympathy or whatever handouts they can get from their friends, you know? But, like, when there are, like, overlapping friends, it makes it really fucking hard for me not to fucking say anything. It makes it really fucking hard for me not to be, like, do you actually want to know what was, what happened and what was said and like all this other shit? Cause I'll, I'll fucking tell you. But then at the same time, if I do that, <clears throat> that's just going to cause more shit because then they're going to get mad that like they got exposed on something. And I just like kind of nixed one of their, um, what do you call it? Uh, social outlets or, um, I don't know, the people around you, support system. Because I don't want to do that. Because I'm not a fucking asshole. And so it just makes it... Just makes it really hard to um, have to fucking deal with any of this. And then on top of everything else, like... This person knows how to, in just a couple words, like make me feel like like oh I should kill myself or something like that you know like she's very very good at um, that kind of shit but this whole like passive aggressive fucking social media posting it's really fucking like it gets me so fucking angry and then most of you go well, why are you even following her still? Like, why are you guys still friends? And I won't say why, but um, there was a post, a very recent post that was made. And that is why. And so I'm trying to just not be that fucking guy right now. That's it. That, that's my that's my whole life's goal. If I could not be that guy right now, just fucking take the high road. And again, like it says in the poem in the blood rag this month, like you could say whatever the fuck you want to your friends. You could say whatever you want on social media, but you dated a poet. So 
there's a book coming and it's big, you know, like deal with it. <clears throat> so that kind of shit just, um, that that's been really fucking with me. And last night I had like the big epiphany last night was the, um, Oh, I don't need to feel like this anymore. And the rage kind of took over the sadness and like revenge is like all I want. And like, it's just like success is the best form of revenge, you know, like nothing will piss somebody off faster than you live in fucking well. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And so I feel good because I was down as fuck yesterday. And then, um, yeah. So I just feel better. And so hopefully I'll be able to get more work done. And um, hopefully this feeling will like last. And that that was the end of it. Um, so that's all that. And then for those of you who are here to just find out what's going on with the Bloodshed Review, um, I talked about this in my member stream on Friday, but Bloodshed Review is going um, quarterly. And the first issue well, that's quarterly is going to be out in November. And it's going to have... Um, Stephen Bruce, Alice Allen, and a center section by Rich Boucher. But I'm thinking because it's going to be quarterly, I could probably get away with having a couple more poets in there too and make it a little bit bigger. So um, I might throw in a couple other people who have been kind of waiting around for that so that should be fun i'm excited but yeah so all of the um the cycle and all that stuff everything's getting pushed back now so and ethan made a really good point like make it an event when they come out doing it quarterly and that makes sense and it would be nice that if like eventually I could like really up the value of like the, the production value of those, um, maybe even go slick with them. I, I don't know. I actually have some, um, samples from some print shops to go over and look at to see if I want to do anything like that. So, yeah, so that's what's going on with all that shit. I was working on the book, the uh, Poetry is Bullshit book, and I'm writing a foreword to um, Robert Fleming's book that's coming out, and I have to turn that in in just a couple days. So hopefully I'll finish that by tomorrow. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was there another thing? I think one of the things that I'm going to be doing on this channel is, um, I don't know if you guys caught the live stream of me painting. That was a lot of fun, and I would love to do more of that, but I know that kind of shit fucks with the YouTube algorithm. So... Um, I'm on the fence about how I'm going to continue with that. But um, there's probably going to start being a lot more content that I'm putting on the members feed than on the um, normal feed, just because the more different types of videos I do, the more YouTube doesn't know what to do with my channel. And I'm really hoping that, that um, by the end of next month, I could hit 2,000 subs, which is funny because the subs don't really mean shit. 
like I, I would I would like my videos to get more views than they do, but like the subs are fun little milestones. So um, that would be cool. So that's kind of what the goal is. So I'm trying to do all of the little things that I know YouTube wants me to do. And a lot of you have been saying you should make multiple channels for shit. Um, I would love to do that. I just already feel spread really thin. And the last thing I think I could do right now is like run another channel. So hopefully I, that'll change in the coming whatevers. But um, yeah, so that's that. What else are you guys doing? What, what was your weekend like? Oh, I forgot I had my sound on on my phone. Let's see here. Is there any good news here? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What stream? What time is it? I don't know. <clears throat> I did a stream and freaked somebody out. Slow night. Okay. Did you have a nice weekend though? Did you did you finish that poem that you started? It's a slow fucking morning, man. Like nothing's fucking happening around here. Although I am fairly excited. I have a lot of projects that are almost done. So I'm getting really excited, like almost finishing all those. And then this week, I don't know how many I'm going to put up, but I'm going to start putting up a lot of my old out of print chat books up on Amazon as eBooks. And it's going to just be one of these things that just builds like I'm going to put like a few up every week um so I would like to get caught up with Amazon on all that shit so that would be kind of cool and then start working on um big paperback collections a friend came over after the stream so it was more wine than poetry oh I hear ya Damn, that, that was late. Friend coming over that time? Shit. God damn. Um, Winterland. Hey, well, I well, um, I finished the sweater that I started knitting. How long did it take you to do it? I, I need a time frame here. I need to find out how quick you are at the knit. <clears throat> oh, and I'm about to do something that I've never really done before just to try to get some fresh fucking conversation <clears throat> and other stuff, obviously. But like, um, I just want to start like talking to new people, but I'm going to totally fucking um, go face first into dating apps and see what happens. So that should be a complete fucking train wreck and probably give me a ton of stuff to write about. So um, cross your fingers for that, that I don't completely, um, I don't know, end up in a ditch somewhere. Um, this one week, because I have used quite thick yarn. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. That's, that's still fucking fast. That's really fucking fast. Um, my kid is almost done knitting this blanket that they've been knitting for 
um, four years. <laughs> um, last time I saw my kid, um, they got it out and was like holding it up. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so close. Like you're just that, that close. Um, deep in the breeds. What's up, man? Um, dating apps are a train wreck. Oh yeah. Like I'm expecting complete and utter like dumpster fires. So, uh, but like, seriously, like if I'm not going to move anytime soon, like as much as I've loved this window, given me all of the fucking inspiration in the world, I need some, some new venues, man. Like I, I need some new inspiration. So yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be a fun one. Bumble, the ladies have to message first. That seems pretty chill because then it's like, yeah, that, that sounds chill. Maybe I'll fucking do that. There was this one I saw, um, I, I was researching this and there's one called, I think it's called Boo and it's for introverts. And I was like, oh, that should be interesting. Or should that be a train wreck? I don't know. That just seems like a lot of conversation, which is cool. And I think that might be fun because the last thing I want to do is like, I don't know, like help someone out of a ditch the first time I ever talk to them. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, once someone on a dating app asked me which of the seven dwarves I would kill if I had to, I think I answered sneezy too quickly because the conversation died then and there. That's so fucking funny. Um, yeah, super close to finishing it. Super close. Like I should be getting the, um, like the photo evidence of a finished blanket here any day now. Um, which would be good because like by the time it's done, like the weather will probably start cooling off a little bit. So, so that's cool. <clears throat> um, Okay, so for those of you, because I've never really used dating apps, like there were times in the past where um, I would like try it out. Because I remember when me and my first wife split, what year was this? I think 2012, I used a dating app. And, um, can't remember which one it was and I met this chick and she lived like a half hour away from me <clears throat> and she wanted to go to this bar that she knows so she was comfortable and that's fine so we go there and this place was fucking huge and empty like it was like the bartender some dude at the bar and then way on the other side of the place was like a guy standing next to a karaoke machine, like the DJ guy or whatever. And then just a bunch of empty tables. We go in there and um, I'm like, okay, this place is dead as fuck, but that's cool. So we could just chat, you know, no big deal. And so we got a couple beers sat down as soon as we sat down the dj's like oh there's people here i need to crank the music so then all of a sudden like the music goes super fucking loud and like there's swirling lights and shit and we're the only people in there and so we're like okay this is fucking dumb so we're screaming across this fucking table to hear each other in an empty fucking room okay and um 
I don't even remember what the fuck she said. She gets up and um, goes and puts in a song for karaoke. And I will give you guys five seconds if you can guess what song a white girl sang at karaoke in 2012. Because it's the same song that they were singing in karaoke bars in the year 2000 and probably before that. So leave it in the chat. What do you think it is? You're, you're running out of time. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a good choice. That's a good choice, Toxic. No, no. What's up, Bookish? How you doing, man? Um, okay, Jessica is really close. Okay, Jessica's a lot closer than anyone else has been. Um, that's funny though. I would have fucking got up and saying that one, dude. I know all the words to that. Um, okay, now now we're getting off a, a little bit here. Okay, so the the correct answer here is, and if you have ever bartended at a bar that does karaoke. This is like the thing that makes you want to die just because of how often you hear it. But um, Black Velvet by Alana Miles. Um, th this Titanic thingy. Um, yeah, so she went up there and she just like belted the whole song flat as fuck. And I was like, oh, what am I doing here? Like, I need to go. This is going fucking horrible. <clears throat> and um, so she finishes. The, the karaoke guy doesn't clap. And no one else is there. And I'm like, shit, I got to clap. So I'm like... <laughs> it was awful. So she comes back. They turn the music back on. And, like, we pretend that we could hear each other talk for, like, I think another beer. Um, oh, you never even heard that song? Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a regional thing. Um, I'm sure you fucking heard it. Like, it's, yeah. It's like a one-hit wonder kind of song. But, um, I don't know. Like, white girls think they could belt that for some reason. Anyway, um, so then I took her home and she like leaned over and kissed me and jumped out of the car. And um, like two days later, she messaged me and she's like, oh, I'm fucking pregnant again from my ex. So I guess we're going to get back together and try to make this work. So um, that is like the history of me on dating apps. So so we'll see what kind of shenanigans I get into. Because if I'm there, something stupid is bound to happen. Right? Hello, the writing sisters. How are you doing today? And if um, any of you are here right now and you just got here, um, I recommend rewinding and starting at the beginning of this um, so you can hear all of my drama and all the stuff going on with the um, review. Uh, GB the Reed says, haha, I just looked up this song and I had no idea what it was until I heard the chorus. One of those songs where people only know the chorus, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, you could just hear it. Some chick who can't sing goes up and just in that part where it's like, <laughs> like they really fucking get into it. And then that whole part where it like slows down and it's like, um, happened so soon. Boom, 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 boom. Like that whole thing. And then they do a sultry little. <laughs> It's just like, oh, my God, fuck my head. Dude, there were times when I was bartending that I heard people do that song like three or four times in a night. And it's just like, and then you get like the super drunk bro that knows he can't sing. So he goes up and does Rock Lobster. And again, this is like, 
it, it trips me out that like I haven't bartended since like probably 2007. So all of my, um, what do you call it? All of my like current topics and the things that were interesting at the time, that's as far as it goes. Past that, like I'm my own man and I don't fucking know anything. So, so there's that. Jessica's like, shit, I sing fucking Black Velvet like every time I go to a fucking karaoke bar. <clears throat> Mumbling the verse at karaoke is so relatable. Yeah, dude, I remember. I mean, now we're getting even deeper. Like, probably about 1,700 years ago, um, I was at a bar and everyone was, all my friends were doing karaoke and like, come on, do it, come on, do it. So I went and I picked this song that I thought was like a real like rocking song that would do well. And it's really fucking slow. And I didn't even think about it. And I go up there and I'm like, ah, 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 ah. and I'm just like looking out at the sea of drunk people like falling asleep. And I'm like, if I don't just stop this song or start screaming, either the bar is going to close or people are going to leave or the karaoke guy is just going to unplug me. So then I just started screaming. Like, I don't even think I was singing the words of the song anymore. I was just yelling and screaming into the microphone, woke everybody up. And then I just like dropped the mic on the floor and walked off. And that was the last time I did karaoke. If you guys in the chat, if you guys do karaoke, what is your go-to song when you do karaoke? And if someone does the song that is your go-to song, do you do your song anyway? These are all really good questions and it will tell a lot about you as a person. No. <laughs> <coughs> Are you fucking joking? Is that fucking Young MC? Is that Young MC I'm hearing there? Is that who does that? Because that's, she's dressed in yellow. She says, hello, come sit next to me, you fine fellow. Like, am, am I on the right track here? Oh my gosh. Jessica with it deep cut there i like blue monday oh who doesn't like fucking blue monday dude but the one time i tried it it was awkward because i never realized how much of the song is instrumental that's the fucking worst dude i know that translates to a lot of embarrassing standing around yeah but you gotta like dance it you gotta like you have to put on a show because because karaoke isn't just the pipes karaoke is the moves you know Allegedly, I actually have no idea because there was a part of me that used to get really annoyed when like you would have these like professional karaoke singers, they would come and they were like dressed for a performance, they would hold the mic and like just start going arms flailing the whole fucking thing. And like, dude, they're living their dream. Why am I giving them such shit? You know, ooh, the weight. Dark end of the street, Dixie Chicken. Fucking Bookish has like a fucking set list over here, dude. What the fuck, dude? Just swaying at the prompter, yeah. You're like, I've had three Long Island iced teas. Don't fuck with me. Oh. Dude, it's so funny. Someone should put together a playlist of all the songs that people have mentioned in this in the comments stream here. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's that's a horrible, horrible um, playlist. A lot of a lot of clashing going on there. You got to be ready with some backups. <laughs> Hell yeah! Wait, did I do karaoke in Ohio? 
I might be lying. I think I might have done karaoke another time. I remember going with people, and I remember other people doing karaoke, but I can't remember if I did it. I'm sure I did if, like, all my friends were doing it. I just can't remember. Yeah, so that was probably the last time I did karaoke. So that was, like, that was on the Creeperson tour. So that was, like, 2011. That was the last time I did karaoke. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard that song in fucking forever. I used to have that Going South CD that you ordered off the TV, but um, I saw it at Tower Records and I was like, get the fuck out of here. And, um, I played that CD to fucking death. Like every song on that CD was amazing. I'm bad at realizing how it will actually be to perform a song in front of people versus myself in the shower. Yeah, dude. See, the problem is, and the way to fix this problem is you just need to invite people over when you're taking a shower because you're going to sound better and you're probably going to look better. So, um, yeah, I think that's really the, that's what everyone needs to start doing. Concerts in the shower. I mean, shit, that could be like your OnlyFans gig, you know? You might be able to pull that off. Um, never even came near a karaoke, but if I'm forced to do it, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, the Bonita Madonna song. Dude, Madonna's got some fucking tracks, dude. And 99 Red Balloons. That's another banger. Banger. Was that Candle in the Wind, the song I was singing? I, I was doing the Dixie Chicken song. Did that sound like Candle in the Wind? Wow. I'm sorry, Elton. And I'm sorry, Little Feet. Like, I really fucked that up, didn't I? Is that who does Dixie Chicken? I can't remember. Ah. <sighs> Seriously, the playlist in this fucking chat, I'm going to try to do it. Maybe I'll fucking put it together. Like, this is a fucking swath of random fucking tracks here, dude. This is good stuff. I was listening to, um, uh, I've been listening to the Breeders a lot because they're coming to town. And I keep thinking I'm going to go to the show. And then I see the ticket prices and I get annoyed yeah dixie chicken is a song and um the dixie chicks do you, have i ever told you guys the story about when i met natalie mains from the dixie chicks that's a good story <clears throat> if you guys want to hear it tell me in the chat but um what was i talking about where was i i've completely lost my train of thought I felt like I had something there. Oh, yeah, I've been listening to the Breeders a lot. And so because I was listening to the Breeders a lot, I started listening to Pixies a lot because that's just what ends up happening. Because whenever I hear Kim sing, I want to hear Gigantic. And then I start listening to the Pixies. And so I was putting together this playlist that was just like a bunch of like Breeders, Pixies, um, the Amps. Uh, what else did I have in there? I think I had Belly in there because Belly's opening for the Breeders on the tour. And then um, <clears throat> Spotify started like suggesting songs to me and shit. So now it's like, like there's a lot of hole in there and there's like, um, the Vaselines and all sorts of shit and Devo. And I was doing all this stuff. And then I don't know what the fuck happened. A Mazzy Star song came on. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm going to listen to the entire Mazzy Star discography. And um, that got really depressing really quick. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to go back to the Smiths. Everything always ends back to the Smiths. Uh, okay. So you guys are never going to guess where I met Natalie Maines. So 
I will tell you because it is the weirdest place that you would ever meet Natalie Maines. It was at the VIP section at a Motley Crue concert. Yes, that happened. So a little backstory. Um, when I was in the late 90s, when I was still trying to do this, trying to get it over, that was the problem. I was doing it and I was doing it well, but getting it over was not happening. I was trying to do this like goth country thing. And the like goth clubs obviously were like, that's way too country. No, get the fuck out of here. And the country bars were like, get the fuck out of here. Like you weird emo kid, like beat it. So I was having a really hard time, but at this time I was also writing a bunch of songs and I started writing all these songs that I thought the Dixie chicks would kill. I'm like, Oh dude, like, I don't know if, if I did this song, if it would sound that good, but dude, Natalie Maines, like, Oh, she would fucking kill it. And so I was just so into her and I'm like, Oh yes, I'm going to marry Natalie Maines. That's my plan. And so I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I'm like, Oh wait, her dad is this like legendary pedal steel studio session guy. I will hire her father to play steel on my album. And then he will like me so much that he will have no choice but to tell his daughter what a great guy I am. Yes, this is exactly how this plan is going to work. <clears throat> and like all great plans that I come up with like that, nothing ever fucking happened. So I was just like, whatever, years go by. And um, I'm at the Motley Crue concert. And I was with my wife. And I saw her and I couldn't fucking believe it. And like nobody knew who she was because we were at a fucking Motley Crue concert. And I was just like, oh my, and I was just losing my shit. And then I'm like, okay, I got to go talk to her. And my wife's like, you're acting like a fucking idiot. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Like, this is just like, I've been, I've been waiting my whole life to go up and talk to this woman. Like, I got to fucking nail this, okay? And she's like, ugh. So she goes up to her and she's like, come on, let's just go and get this over with. So she goes up to her and she's like natalie natalie um my husband's a huge fan of yours and he just wants to meet you and she turns and looks at me and i'm all you're hot that's what i fucking did that's what i fucking said that's what i fucking did and then i immediately apologize and i'm like and i'm like sweating like a pig and i'm like i I've, I've been wanting to like say something to you my whole life and that was what came out and it came out sounding like that i'm not, like the the hand over the mouth and the uh, that's exactly what came out. And I'm like, you know what? Um, enjoy the show. You know, I'll, I'll leave you to it. And that's how I, that's how I ruined my chances of um, running away with Natalie Maines. Yeah, dude, I'm smooth like creamy peanut butter. So um, let's just, ah, uh, <sighs> The Dixie Chicks release a delicious song about the lead singer's ex a couple years ago, Gaslighter, speaking of toxic exes. Oh my gosh. We have we have something to bond over. Ugh. And 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 they broke up. So like th this this whole thing could actually happen now. So so maybe I should be Maybe I should be going to more Motley Crue concerts. Oh, that's something. Motley Crue was fucking awful. The band was great, but Vince Neil was the most horrendous version of Vince Neil you ever heard. And that's why I don't like seeing bands that I used to like when I was younger. Because um, when they're doing like their like comeback tours and shit. It's just, it's kind of sad. It's fun, but it's sad. I, I have high standards. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's what happened. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, 
fun little jaunt down at me looking like an asshole. <laughs> Deep in the Reed says, after a breakup, people need someone to be there to tell them they're hot. Trust me, now's your time to shine. Yeah, I don't know how fresh that breakup is anymore, dude. Um, if that was a couple years ago, I don't know. Maybe she just wants someone to tell her she's hot. Natalie, if you're watching this, you're still hot. Probably said that wrong. Ugh, fuck that up. God damn it. Well, I guess it's just a life of solitude for me then. So for my dating app profile, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with like, I'm probably going to hate you. So you might want to just skip or what is it? Swipe left. You might just want to swipe left. I'm probably going to end up hating you. And um, maybe I'll get some tryhards who um, always want to uh, like, what do you call it? Seek um, approval. Mm. Now I feel like I'm being a... See, this whole thing's fucking stupid. I'd rather just go up to somebody, spill a drink on them, and then spill my drink on them, and then say, hey, we should get out of here. You're covered in a bunch of drinks. That's a much better way to meet people. Okay, come on. What what should I put in my bio? Hit it. Because I'm I'm with the fucking the cream of the crop here. Okay, you guys are the salt of the earth. What do I put in my bio on a dating app? Put a single Z next to bloodshed. <laughs> put it on the back cover. Yeah, I'll fucking do that. That's fucking funny. Oh shit. That's hysterical. Oh my God, that's fucking funny. I'm dumb enough to do something like that too. Holy shit. Deep in the reeds coming out with some fucking awesome fucking ideas, man. Deep in the reeds needs to be my wingman. Holy shit. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know if it's a homeless person or what's happening, but somebody this week has been going crazy, smashing bottles in the street outside. And it's just like all day, all night, like every fucking hour and a half. It's just like. <clears throat> oh, Jessica, you've read a lot of books, you know, about dating. You've seen a lot of shows. What is something that is good to put in a bio? Okay, I'll start with that if you think that'll work. I don't know. It seems a bit rough. I was married right out of high school. What's dating? Okay, if you think that'll work, I'll fucking, I'll put that in. And I'll say, Jessica told me to say this, so... If you don't dig this, take it out on Jessica. Damn. I don't think, I actually don't think that's bad. <laughs> yeah, because it, it gives the impression that you're like really into like relationships out of habit. I think way too much about everything. Like I, everything I read, I'm like, oh, let me try to psychoanalyze this person. Um, I mean, do you want a long-term mate or do you just want someone to hang out with? Like, honestly, right now, I just want like material. I want adventures. I want, um, what do I want? That's probably the fucking question, right? 
because the only reason why I'm even considered this is my friends here are like, dude, you just need to get on some apps, man. Just fucking Christ, man. Dude, you should get on some apps. Apps, bro. Apps. And I'm just like, you guys sound like fucking idiots when you talk to me. Like, why are you my friends? Why am I hanging out with you? It's 2023. Maybe put your pronouns, but make them really cool. Okay, like, um, what would my pronouns be? Anatomic carbon rod and... um, them those those will be my pronouns there yes i think we're on to something here yes not sure about the rod thing (laughs) yeah for real no this should be fun you know like I just, I feel like I've been talking to the same people, like having conversations with the same people for so long. It would just be interesting to talk to somebody who has like a completely different like life experience, you know? And like, I'm doing more stuff. I'm like doing this like poetry workshop. I think I talked about it like two weeks ago or something. Um. It's pretty cool, but I definitely feel like I stick out like a sore thumb there. Um, And there's a lot of stuff that's being like taught that I don't like, that I do not approve of in my work. And um, it's talked about... uh, as an absolutes and I fucking hate when people speak in absolutes about art drives me crazy profile picture probably gets more views than a bio though oh okay so I need to do something stupid in my profile picture I don't know maybe I could like photoshop me like putting my head in a hippo's mouth or something like that Something like that. Something ridiculous. Oh, see, now we're talking. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Yeah. But there's a lot of fucking Sith Lords out there then. Because everyone who thinks they're a fucking artist of any kind tends to speak like that. Especially in the world of Posey, which drives me absolutely batshit bonkers crazy. Yeah, so this is all good. Yes to the hippo. Women love hippos. There's an absolute for you. Jesus Christ. This fucking philosopher fucking comes in here and starts spouting shit like this. Ah, my God. Bookish. What the fuck? Oh, dude, let me fucking tell you how awkward I felt in the first, like, 15 seconds of that video you just posted where you didn't say anything and you were just looking lovingly at me. It it was, it was quite, um, quite jarring. I'm curious to see how um, your retention is on that video. If you're watching analytics. (laughs) Oh shit. Um, Anyway, Jessica is right. You need cute selfies in your cute outfits. Oh shit. Do I need fucking outfits now? Do I need to like, do I need to spruce up my wardrobe? Yeah, that's another thing I realized the other day. I'm like, oh, I have no clothes that I could like go somewhere in. Yes. I dress like some weird homeless beach bum. Um, Let's see, Jessica says, oh my God, my son likes to do those drawing competitions and he's like, pick a winner. And it's the hardest thing to try to explain. There's no losing in art. See, that's that's the weird thing. There's no losing in art, 
but there is losing in competitions. So the paradox exists right off the bat. So how do you, what do you do that? Um, you were thinking of me the whole time. <laughs> Um, I've been afraid to look at the analytics. Oh, dude, that's fucking classic. Yeah, like I, uh, there was a part of me, if, like when YouTube made the new rule where um, they changed the profanity um, stipulations for um, ad suitability to you can say, pretty much any bad word after seven seconds of the video, but the first seven seconds, you can't say anything like that. So I was like, okay, yes, I just need to be quiet for the first seven seconds of every video. Yeah, I could do that. And so when I do the podcast, it's easy because the intro and then when I do the whole, hello, everybody, blah, 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 that whole thing's like 10 seconds. So I'm like, okay, I'm safe on the podcast. But when I just do a normal fucking video, because there's so many times when I just want to say like, um, hello, assholes, you know, and just like, whatever. But um, yeah, so you can say, you can say like shit and all those other words as much as you want in a video, but you only get so many fucks. And I don't know how they judge the fucks. And I say fuck all the time. And I've said it a bunch in this fucking video already. But I think it is the amount of fucks in a certain period. So like, if you're going like fuckity fuck, 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 like this video, this live stream will probably be demonetized now. But if you spread your fucks out, um, as you should, um, you're fine with it. I don't know. And it's weird when they put like rules in that don't have absolutes. Like you can do this, not this. Then it gets a little weird because now you're just like kind of betting on the AI to judge you. Um, Jessica says, I guess it depends on what the judge prefers, but there's so much gray area there. There totally is. There totally is. Um, Deep the Reed says, it's the quality, not the quantity. Yeah. So you have to say fuck really good. It's like more of like a fuck. You got to really sell that fuck. Yeah. But yeah, so bookish, that fucking, that cracked me up. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so today I'm going to put up the um, Bukowski video for members. I'm going to try to record a podcast here, but then at um, 2 o'clock I have to um, do that thing that we talked about at the beginning. And since most of you weren't here for that, um, I've been having some deep, dark blues about things that have been going on with my ex because my ex is still really good at manipulating me and saying the things that make me like hate myself when she's talking to me. And um, one of the like hooks that she has had in me over the last couple months is that she still has shit here that she's never come to pick up and we'll like talk about her coming to pick it up and then we get into a fight. And so she never shows up. And um, so today is the day that she's getting the last of all of her things that she has left here throughout the months or whatever. So um, like, 
fingers crossed that I stand my ground, don't feed into bullshit, and um, don't argue, don't be passive aggressive, and just fucking be the better person. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm a little nervous just because I don't know how, um, I don't know. I just don't want to be a piece of shit. I don't want to be the dick in this situation. And I'm hoping she is very, Basically, I hope she's having a good day right now because she can't cope with stress of any kind. And um, so if she's having a good day, like, hopefully that will, like, stick to her and all that other shit. But anyway, so that's the plan. So... Send me good vibes and cross your fingers for me. And I'll probably run to the shop and get some stuff. And I don't know. And hopefully, um, thank you, JH. Hopefully get some content up here soon. All right. So I'm going to split. So I hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day. If you guys have any other great ideas for me, just drop me an email or send me a message. Okay. Or leave it in the comments of this after we're done. Okay. Yeah. That's all I can do, man. Okay. See you guys later. Take care.